Welcome more gamers, Doug here from 2 Plus Stuff, and we have a very special kind of video today. You see, I'm gonna be doing a very basic painting tutorial series in two parts. One that covers the basic fundamentals of how to create stone and wood, which are kind of the most common things you see on terrain for us. And the second one being how to take it to the next level with things like posters, blood splatter, fire, you know, light emanations and those kinds of things. And so this is all made possible by the incredible folks over at 3D Egos, which is a terrain company uh, over on Etsy that has been a tremendous support to this channel, quite frankly. And today we're gonna be talking about the, how do you pronounce it? The Whitewood Abbey Smitty, which I'll throw up here now. This is an incredibly cool looking model, and we're gonna use the same model for both parts so you can follow along. And if you want to check out this model for yourself, be sure to check in the link down below. I have a coupon code that'll get you 25% off. It is an affiliate code, but it doesn't cost you anything, and it just goes to supporting the channel. So in this first video in this two-part series, we're gonna be painting both stone and wood. I'm gonna be running the colors across the bottom here as we use them, and I'll have a little guide here at the end, just kind of a recap so you can screen capture it for ease of use. Now I'll fast forward through the parts because it does get a little tedious at times uh, where I'm just doing the same thing, but I promise I will not skip ahead to the next step until I kind of slow it down and we walk through it together. With that being said, we're gonna jump into it by painting up the stone of our little forge. All right, when you receive your little forge here, it's gonna come in basically three pieces. You obviously have the main structure here. You can see the little detail with the tool shop in the side there. Forgive the paint on my fingers, I apologize. So we got that, we have the roof, and of course, the little stone forge. And basically, it's really simple to put together. Just plop this here and then this slides over with the hole in the roof. But I'm gonna keep them separate for right now just to paint them more easily. And what we're gonna do is start by doing the tutorial for stone here on the back, okay? And then I will go ahead and fast forward and kind of get it everywhere, but you'll see exactly how I'm doing it. Now, to do this, we're gonna paint with a technique known as dry brushing. And if you are absolutely new to the hobby, welcome to your new best friend, my friend. Uh, we've gone ahead and primed this. Uh, usually it'll come to you sort of this, um, this is uh, 3D printed, so it's just kind of drab gray. Went ahead and primed it uh, with the paint that I'll throw up on the screen here. And what priming does is it allows us to have a paint surface that, you know, miniature paints and those kinds of things stick to much easier than this like kind of slippery, almost plastic. So acrylic paints want to have a nice primed surface. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump into this. Now, I'm gonna be using Games Workshop colors uh, for this tutorial. They are a, uh, Citadel Paints is kind of what it's technically called. And uh, you don't have to do that, but you can find similar colors online. So the way dry brushing works, you're gonna take your paint, just tap with a little, and I, I can't emphasize that word enough, little amount of paint. Get yourself a cloth or a paper towel. Here I have an old white shirt uh, just to make it show up more for you and we're actually going to paint on it just a little bit to get some of that excess color off we want very little color on the brush to the point where if you drag it over your skin it barely tinges your skin a different color okay and we come here to our primed model and here's what we're gonna do okay so essentially we want to apply color in such a way uh, that it looks like it's coming from a source. So the sun is above, it's shining down on this, and what that's gonna do is leave the bottom of each of these stones a little bit darker and the top of it much brighter, okay? So for our first color here, we have Skaven Blight Dinge. It's a dark, dark gray that has a kind of a hint of brown to it. And so that's gonna give us our, our gross um, little, little texture there. It's not gonna look super different from what you see here, okay? And the way dry brushing works, and I'll go this in slow motion here, with your paint brush that has very little paint on it, you put it somewhere um, and you drag downward. Again, this way we're only catching the top section of each of these little stones. We're not going into the bottoms at all. It's just catching the top. What's important is that when you reach the bottom, you pick the brush up, go back up, and you do it again. And we're just doing this over and over again. And in this way, over time, we will color the stones, but we'll leave the lower inner parts uh, the original black primer color. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, and I'll just show you here. We'll, we'll just do one panel together. It might not look like it, but after every stroke, I am picking it up completely off the model. And you can start to see, 
yeah I'm checking on the camera here you can start to see where some of that gray color is beginning to build up it, it is a little bit lighter than the primer certainly reflects light a little bit better and for this one we're not we're not worried too much again this is just to, to add in a little bit of warmth that's why it has the the slight hint of brown notes but it'll start looking like stone here with our next color okay so that's with the Skaven Blight Dinge. You can see it in contrast to the Pure Dark. It's not super different. That is okay. Next one we're gonna do is Dawnstone. This is a layer paint from GW, so it's a little bit translucent, but it'll work perfect for us. I'm not even gonna wash the brush. I'm just tapping it in there, working it into my cloth, getting very little paint on the edges, and we'll pick it back up. now. Again, even though you can't really see the Skaven Blight Dinge very much, uh, I understand that. It, it just adds that little bit of warmth to the tones. So now, when we do the same thing with this brighter color, you can begin to see a, you get those little gray blotches starting to pick up the edges, the top edges specifically, of all these little stones. And now we're adding depth because now you have the darker, recesses where the cracks and crevices are uh, are all dominated by that black primer and then we're building up color from there so now we're adding a little bit of dimension to this thing and what's great about this specific model and, and why i used it for a, a tutorial like this is because these stones are not level like some are further in some are further out so this one here is obviously popping out that's why it has more highlight which is great we want it to look a little different it adds a little bit of visual diversity is what I'm gonna call it. You know, it just there's just more in, like interesting things going on. So go ahead, get a little bit more. Don't remember, uh, don't forget, there is always a little bit of paint left here on our uh, cloth so we can pick that up. There's a great little crack in the wall here which we'll do some special effects with later in the next series. And we're just going on through and picking out the stone. Now the reason I take all this time to go through this is because quite frankly, I find that terrain tutorials go one of two ways. Either they seem so intimidating that people don't wanna try, which is really a shame, because honestly terrain, having a, a painted board, you know, full of terrain is a fantastic thing. It really makes the game pop. No matter what miniatures game you're playing, it could be D&D, could be, you know, uh, Warcry, AOS, whatever it is, it doesn't matter but there's nothing quite like playing on a painted table. And the other side is that they can, you know, they can make it complicated or it just is primed black and there's no life on the table and that's a shame. All right, so there's our Dawn Stone. You can already see it's beginning to look like stone, okay? And with our last one, this is Administratum Gray. It's also a layer paint. It's, it's very somewhat translucent, I should say, but it's much, much lighter than the other two. Now, the thing is, we want to be very selective about where we put this paint. Okay, because it's gonna be significantly brighter than the other ones. So we're gonna use it more sparingly, and we're gonna, when you dry brush and you, you know, glaze the brush over the side, we're just gonna do very lightly. And I'm gonna talk about two hairs and some air specifically is kinda what we're going for here. And you can already start to see it's beginning to pop on some of those sharper corners. And we just, you don't have to do it everywhere either if you want to have like your rocks look a little bit different here and there. I'm gonna really go heavily over here on this crack thing because I want it to pop and stand out a bit. There we go. And we're just really lightly brushing. Now if I have like a sharp rock edge like there is some here. I might go a little bit harder, make it really, really stand out. But honestly, for the most part, this is quite enough. I'm going to grab just a tiny bit more. I want to want to brighten that up just a smidge. Okay. And what you can notice is here is I did not apply it evenly, right? There's this little spot right here where it's a little bit darker um, towards that center right there, it's a little bit darker. And you want those things because if you kill all the darkness, 
in your, your terrain, none of the light really matters, right? You need the contrast of light and dark to make it look interesting. And so this is a very simple way to do a stone wall. Now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and set this down here, and I'm gonna do that exact same method across the rest of this and our little, you know, fireplace, forge, whatever. And uh, you're gonna see exactly how this looks when it's all said and done. So, like I said, I'm gonna go fast forward and I will come back to you real soon. And when it comes to stonework in particular, it really is that simple. It's three colors, you're just building up from black. You're using the black primer as your shadow color, and then everything upon that is just adding highlights, successive highlights to really pick out the details in depth. So that is the, the sharper edges and the ones that are further out are gonna be brighter than the things that are further into the recesses. Now I'm gonna have great pictures here at the end that are like kind of show you exactly how this looks. I'm not gonna to touch anything with the stone anymore. And instead we're gonna jump straight into how to paint the wood on this model. As you can see, there are all kinds of like wood pillars and the roof, roof is wooden, of course. And uh, we'll go, go from there. And so again, this is the building base. And then the next episode, Episode, we're going to be talking about how to turn these things into something amazing. And so let's go ahead down to the downward cam and we're going to dive into the wooden features here. So we are back here to the downward cam looking at how to paint the wooden parts. Now there's a few going on here. Uh, obviously we're going to focus on these wooden pillars that support the roof. This entire little thing in the back here is also a wooden workspace with some metal tools on top of it. We'll worry about the metal in the next video, but we are going to put the wood down for that. And of course, on the back side where we already painted, you can see that these stoned in sections are actually divided by three wooden pillars. And so we're gonna get those as well. In addition to that, I'm just gonna grab a few bits and bobs here and there. There's like a plank of wood here, plank of wood there, but I'm going to do the roof a different color, but it's gonna be using pretty much the exact same technique in terms of dry brushing, using the black primer as our base for shadow and things like that. And so to do this portion here, we're gonna use three colors. Again, we're gonna use, uh, this one is Dryad Bark. This is a base paint from GW, so it's a lot more dark. Like it, uh, it sticks to the color. It's gonna be more painted on rather than dry brushed. So there's that. The next thing we're gonna do is do a uh, quick, let's see, dry brush shade of Sylvaneth Bark. And then lastly, a final little highlight here, very, very little bit of Talarn sand, okay? And uh, if you wanted, there is a product called a wash or shade that you called Agrax Earthshade. And so this is one where you can, I'll show you how to apply it if you wanna use it. It's not mandatory, but I do highly suggest it because it's going to make all the other little bits in here much, much easier. So we'll put you this and you can basically uh, go ahead and, and paint it brown give it a wash and so now you're adding brown shadows instead of the black from the primer and then you build it up other colors like we did before with dry brushing so let's go ahead and get started with that so kicking it off with dryad bark i have my super <laughs> super well used uh palette here we're just going to take a little bit throw it on the palette now here's something important if you are new to miniature painting i'm just going to throw a lot on there because we are going to use quite a bit there's there's a lot of wooden sections on this thing you're gonna to wanna to take your brush into some water and just mix it in there. Essentially, we wanna thin this paint. And the reason we want to thin it is so that we don't clog up all the detail on our model. And so you want it to be sort of a, a thinner consistency. And so let's start by picking out all the wood section. Here we have some, uh, some beams. I'm just gonna get some of that excess paint out of there. That runs straight through here. And what I do suggest you do is exactly what we're doing here, which is you block out the sections first. Okay, so don't worry if you mess up, you can always touch it up with some gray afterwards. 
Okay, so that etches out the, the base on the, the bottom there. But let's talk about some of these pillars, okay? Let's see, what's the easiest one? I think this is probably... Yeah, this side over here. Let's focus on this. So we're just gonna throw a whole bunch of dryad bark on here. Pretty liberally, because again, it is thinned out, so we don't need to worry about clogging detail. Let's see, there are some little frayed odds and ends. We're gonna pull those off. It was really windy when I primed this thing, so little bits and bobs in the air got stuck to it. But I actually kind of like that because it makes the wood seem kind of worn. And because we're not doing anything super interesting or technical, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this and I'll come right back here when I have all these beams figured out. All right, so here we are with all of the brown pieces blocked out. Now this is gonna take a little bit more time to dry because we did add some water and we, we painted it on rather than just dry brushing. It's gonna take just a minute. So we'll come back when that's done and then we're going to throw on the wash if you want to use one. So I'll go ahead and set this down and we'll come right back. And now that the brown has dried our dryad bark, we're gonna come back over here with a wash of the Agrax Earth Shade. Again, this isn't a mandatory step by any means, but if you have it, it adds a little bit of brown to the shadows, which of course you know, wood would have, as opposed to sort of the, the black that permeates the rest of the stone. Now, this is really cool because you can kind of apply it pretty liberally. You can see it's just darkening it up. It's just reinforcing the brown. And you can do this all over. All the wood areas get some of this. Now I will say that this will take a little bit longer to dry, right? Because it because it is so uh, fluid-like, right? It's just it's almost like water. It's it's rushing into the recesses and that kind of thing. And so I would really recommend letting this sit for probably 45 minutes or so. It's a great time to if you're you know painting something else or. Uh, focusing on a different part of the model to go ahead and focus on that for a bit and then come back to this once it's completely dry and it is very important that it's completely dry because our next paint is going to need a dry surface to be able to adhere to so I'll go ahead and finish this out and come back in roughly an hour 45 minutes to an hour and we'll take a look at how it is and now our uh, wash has had time to dry. Again, it's not going to look super different. It's just building up that warmth. You can see it's changed just a smidge. But now what we're going to start doing is adding those highlights. So for this, I have the Citadel dry paint uh, called Sylvaneth Bark. Okay. Now dry paints are a little bit different in the sense that they're not super uh, liquidy. They're intended to be used for dry brushing, but of course any paint can. I'm just going to go in there, tap, 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 just like we do before. Get our cloth or paper towel. Dry off almost all of the excess here. So we have just a smidge on there. Now, one thing I will say about painting wood, right? Before, when we were painting the stone, we were following where the light went, right? From top down, because the light would shine from the top. With wood, you generally want to do the same, but what's more important here is picking out the wood grain. That is to say, the finer details that give what its grooves and all those kinds of things. So you can go different directions, just in whatever which way picks out that grain. You can already see on the camera there, it's beginning to really, really pick up. And we're gonna do this exact thing all across our wood portions. Okay, and you can have it be a little bit more intense in some places, a little bit lighter in others. And that's just gonna to add to kind of the Honestly, make it more realistic because wood is not, you know, a singular color anywhere. That's not how nature works. And so what we're gonna do is finish out this dry brush in here. Again, the top doesn't matter too much because all this is gonna be covered up uh, by the roof. So we'll skip that for now. We're just gonna worry about these little inner places. Honestly, a, a great way to focus your kind of dry brushing here is on corners, the nice sharp corners where a detail would really, really pop out wonderful looking great so what i'm going to do as i'm finishing up this last little bit is tell you that our next color is going to be our kind of final highlight right just some super light color that we're going to use again very sparingly like we did with the final highlight for the stone and that is going to be talarn sand uh, this is the 
highlight for wood that I, I honestly love to use because it is, it's kind of this medium between brown and a khaki, right? It edges a little bit closer to the brown. And of course, what's really great about this is if you pick any three combination of, of brown colors, you can achieve very similar effects and it looks even better if you mix them together. If you have different kinds of wood, if you have, um, you know, because, you know, pull trees from various places, it can make it look more rustic, kind of cobbled together. And it's a little hard to see. The wood, the wood parts are a bit harder to see uh, with my setup here and I apologize for that. And there we go. Now, again, what I'm gonna be doing is pausing here. I'm gonna fast forward and um, I'll turn the camera off here and there for when stuff's just drying and not anything interesting is happening. But I'm gonna do that exact same process everywhere else, right across all the wood for our toolbox here, the things on the back that separate each section of the stone. And we'll come back here when it's all finished. All right, and after that little brief flash forward, you can see I used the colors uh, we all have on the bottom of the screen here uh, to do the red roof. I used uh, a few colors. I'll go into more detail later, but essentially I used the exact same technique we've been doing the entire time, where you have a base color and you pick two brighter ones. That's what I did. For these rocks that are on top here, uh, weighing down the roof, I just went back over with our three gray colors we used for the stone and picked them out to make them match. And then over here, let me pull this little stove out, and you can see I went through and picked out the silver of all the tools and junk on there and just gave it a wash with Agrac Earthshade just to kind of add some shadow, some depth. And uh, let's go ahead and put this all together. I'm gonna give you some great shots of how this looks. Again, this is tabletop standard. So bare minimum work, it's very simple to look fantastic. What we're gonna do in our next episode is come back through here, and I'm gonna point out just a few things that we are going to be doing. So first off, we're not gonna do too much with the roof. We're going to do fire and warmth inside the fireplace, as well as uh, putting posters on the wall, blood stains on the floor, and some rust effects on these tools. So a couple few, like just a couple little things that go a long way to making this that little extra mile. So, so as you can see, it is incredibly simple to get some great looking terrain. This piece, I kind of, you know, fast forwarded through the end because unique to it is the roof and the tools and those kinds of things, but your basic concepts for stone and wood are going to be applicable on a large amount of fantasy themed terrain. And so using those two, you can really just crank out a table exceedingly fast. If you want to see some more awesome terrain, go ahead over into the link down below and you can use the coupon code. It's an affiliate code, I'll be honest with you, uh, for 25% off any of your purchases from the awesome guys over at 3D Egos. So there's a link to this specific building, the actual like smithy that we had, as well as a link to their general store, which has hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of buildings and uh, centerpieces and towers and all kinds of stuff. And these two techniques, the stone, the wood, will help you on a vast majority of them. So check it out. Thank you so much for watching this video with me today. And have yourselves some happy wargaming.